Hey there, how's it going? This is Jake in another video and in this one we're going to be looking at how we can deploy Commissar to an EKS cluster and we're going to authenticate it with a single AWS account. So we're going to be retrieving the resources and showing them in the dashboard of just a single uh, AWS account. In another video I'll look at how we can add multiple accounts to uh, Commissar deployment inside of an EKS cluster. So. Um, just a quick word of warning, this isn't necessarily a Kubernetes video, so we're not going to be going through the steps of how to set up an EKS cluster or how to gain access to it. I'm kind of uh, taking for granted that you already know how to do that. But if you don't know, uh, don't worry, just reach out to us on the Discord server and we'll be happy to help with any issues that you might have. But in this particular video, I'm going to give you pretty much everything you need by ways of a Helm chart that I'm going to show you. And with that, you'll be able to get up and running in just a few minutes. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to open up my terminal here to show you what I I have. So of course, we're going to need access to an EKS cluster. To work with the terminal and with uh, kubectl, I use these add-ons. Um, one is called um, kubectx and the other one is kubens. I'll add them to the description of the video. I find them to be very, very useful when it comes to navigating between clusters and between namespaces. So, uh, so yeah, so that's what you're going to see me using now. So kctx is the command that um, that shows me the clusters that I have access to. Cool. We're using the testing cluster. And with KNS, I can see the namespace that I'm in at the moment, which is testing commissar, which is correct. Cool. So as I said, the Helm chart, which is in our GitHub is the place where we would recommend for you to start. Just head over to repositories. And the very first one is the Helm repository. So go ahead and clone this and you'll have what I have right here. Let's go ahead and open these files in VS Code. Let me just walk you through the files. You have the chart.yaml, which you don't have to change anything here. If you want to use a different version, you can change it in the values.yaml file right here. If you want to change the default region that you're in, you can do so right here. But the important part is in the templates folder. And what we have is a deployment manifest, a persistent volume, which is the volume that we're going to use to store our data. In my case, I'm going to be using a SQL light file, and that's going to be stored onto that persistent volume. This is the configuration right here. Um, in order to um, glue this persistent volume to the deployment, I'm going to use this persistent volume claim. I have a service account right here, which we're going to have to attach to an IAM role that we're going to create. This particular IAM role and everything that you need to get up and running, you'll be able to find it here in the documentation. So let's just quickly head over there. So here in the documentation under Cloud Providers AWS, you're going to be able to find the steps for the EKS installation for a single account. In that service account area, you're going to add in the IAM role that you're going to create following these steps. Okay, let's go back over here. So apart from the service account, you're also going to have a service, which is going to expose the deployment and you're going to have your config.toml file. And this is up to you. You can choose to use a different source. You can use environment variables. In my case, I'm using the credentials file and you're going to add here your persistence mode. In my case, the SQLite. And since I'm using the credentials file, I'm going to actually have to create the credentials file. I could put it inside of this config map, but I've chosen to um, create a different config map just to make it a little bit clearer. And here, I'm just gonna use the simplest way of using the AWS access key and the secret access key. Just a word of warning, we definitely wouldn't recommend for you to use this way in production. This is simply for testing purposes. And it's also the easiest way for you to get up and running quickly. To be on the safer side, you'll probably want to authenticate using IAM roles, and you'll be able to find the instructions to do that down in the multiple account EKS deployment section. But I'll also explain that in another video in more detail. Just for now, I'm going to add my AWS credentials this way, and we're going to mount these two files with um, volumes. And for that, we're going to have a volume for each one of those config maps, one here for the config file, the second one for the credentials file. And then we have the third uh, volume, which is the volume that will be dedicated for the storage. And since we want to persist this data, we're going to use this persistent volume claim to load this information, to load this data onto the persistent volume that we've created right here. Additionally, in the deployment, we are creating a container. And here in the args section, we're passing in the start command 
and we are also passing in the path to where we have located the config.yaml file. Okay, so these are the only files that we're going to need. So let me show you what it's going to look like. And um, I've rerun this. So if I print out the pods that I have, kubectl get pods, I can see that the pod is running. And, and since the service is of type load balancer, by printing out the service, we'll get a URL to the load balancer that was uh, created for us. So I'm just going to do a kubectl get service. And here is the URL to the elastic load balancer. Okay, so by heading over here, I can see that I have access to Commissar. And this is the deployment that is running at the moment in the EKS cluster, but I'm going to want to do it together with you. So let me just delete this. So I'm going to run a helm list. So by running a helm list, I can see the deployment that's running. So let me just get rid of this. I'm going to do a helm uninstall commissar. Cool. So let's see if there's any pods. kubectl get pods. No, there's nothing running. So if I head over to the dashboard, as you can see, it's timing out. I'm, I don't have access to it anymore because this pod is not running at the moment. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pause the video. I'm going to um, re-add my information, my credentials, and then we'll redeploy the helm chart. Okay, and we're back. So in the meantime, I just added my personal credentials to the credentials file. And I also in the service account added the IAM role that I created through the steps that you can find right here. Okay, so let's deploy this again. Oh, and by the way, if I were to go over to the elastic load balancer that we used to access the pod previously, that would not work because we got rid of that service and that service um, also deleted the elastic load balancer. If I do a helm list at the moment, I can see that nothing is running. No helm charts are running. So let's go ahead and deploy it. Okay, so I'm going to pass in the command helm install. I'm going to call it commissar and I'm going to pass in the files that are found in this directory. It just takes a few seconds and we are, are up. So sometimes when right after deploying, it might take a few minutes for you to have a working Elastic Load Balancer. Let's give this a go. Let's see if it works. OK, so it's not working just yet. But one thing that you can do if you don't want to wait for your Elastic Load Balancer to load is that you can uh, port forward the pod. So you're linking the port 3000 of the pod inside of the cluster to your local host. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a, I'm going to run a kubectl port forward and I'm going to port forward the pod. And wait, I'm just going to actually need to find the name of the pod. The pod is this one. Cool. So I'm going to pass in kubectl port forward and I'm going to port forward a pod which is called this and I'm going to port 3000 to port 3000. Cool. So this seems to be working. Let's head over to our local host 3000 and there you have it. We have access to Commissar which is running inside of a pod inside of our EKS cluster and we have access to the dashboard and we can use Commissar however we want now. Since we're port forwarding, if we wanted to stop, we would just press Control C. So whenever you're happy and you want to get rid of the deployment and you want to um, get, make sure that you're getting rid of all of the Kubernetes objects that came along with the Helm chart, you can just type in Helm uninstall Commissar and this will effectively um, wipe out all of the Kubernetes objects that were related to Commissar. So that's pretty much it. That's all I will hand for you in this quick video. Thanks a minute for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.